Tesla's massive Gigafactory is getting bigger and busier. Thousands of robots and more than 7,000 workers are building battery packs and drive units for the Tesla Model 3. As sales of the electric car grow, Tesla is planning on more lower-priced models, which means building battery packs at a lower cost. The challenge Tesla's automotive president is confident the automaker can overcome. The battery remains the most... Uh the costliest part of the vehicle. So it's really, really important that we improve our efficiency and the design so that we make them more affordable. Tesla is already well ahead of competitors when it comes to battery costs, partially because of the size and scale of the Gigafactory. But analysts question how long those advantages will last. Do I think they have an advantage? I actually really don't think they have a, a scale advantage. Uh, uh, for very long, I guess I put it that way, because uh, a lot of uh, scale from battery companies is coming very, very soon. Other automakers from GM to Nissan to Mercedes are planning to build and sell more electric cars, especially five or six years from now. So there will be greater demand for the raw materials that make up batteries, like lithium. That concerns me a bit because if if you're gonna if you if you're gonna get a mine to start producing at capacity in 2022. You need to be investing in it today, investing in putting shovels in the ground today. And that is not happening at a pace that, that needs to for the EV industry to, to really take off in that time period. Tesla is confident it will have plenty of raw materials needed to expand battery production as it pushes to expand electric vehicle production and bring out more lower priced models in the future. Becky? Hey, Phil, what do you think? You've been covering this for a while. You think the lower battery price is the key to a lower sticker price? Yes, it is definitely the key because that is the single largest expense that the automakers have when it comes to building electric vehicles. And because those batteries are so costly right now, it means that the majority of the electric vehicles we see right now are higher priced luxury models where the automakers can make a profit. Bring down the cost of the battery. You should bring down the potential to roll out more lower-priced models. Phil, thank you so much. Phil LeBeau. You bet. It's not just Tesla. Other major automakers are building or developing fully electric vehicles. But will sales take off? And if so, when? Rebecca Lindland is executive analyst at Kelly Blue Book. And Rebecca, thanks for being here right now. Thanks for having me on. A lot of people like the idea of electric yeah. vehicles. Um, but is it going to, any time in the near future, become more than just an idea to a reality for a, for a legitimate number of people to say this is it? You know, I think we're actually finally starting to see products that people want to buy. And you know, electric vehicles are still under 2% of the new car sales every month. So it's a very small number. But what I like, especially recent products I've driven, the Audi e-tron I just got back from driving, uh -huh. and this is a vehicle that is finally normal. It's just, it was completely transparent that it, it just happened to be an electric vehicle. What, it just feels like a regular car? It just that feels like a regular it? car. They, even when you brake, usually regenerative brakes, which give power back to the battery, they're really grabby. Mm -hmm. They're like, it, it's, you kind of jerk. These were completely seamless. How much of it is what you're describing, that the electric cars really feel differently? And how much is it that so many of them are these luxury vehicles? If it's uh, going to be Mercedes, uh, Tesla, and Audi, like you mentioned, how much of it is the pricing holding back the average person from jumping in and doing it? Really very little on the pricing, because you look at a vehicle like the Chevy Bolt, the Nissan Leaf, these vehicles are... A very affordable mm -hmm. and people still are not gravitating towards them. Now, if you look at the new car, if the, the new vehicle adoption curve, people that want a new type of technology tend to have a lot of money anyway. So it's less about the budget and more to me about things like range anxiety. Yeah, they, that's the, like if you can go yes. 200 miles or if it's less than that, what if I get stuck somewhere and there's right. not a charging station? Exactly. And so that's something that we're starting to address even more now. Again, what, you mean the infrastructure the or infrastructure just the range? And the range, both. So those batteries that was in the in the Phil LeBeau piece, we're getting more range. We're getting over 200 miles of range. You know, uh, President Trump is in the midst of his battle with GM, which has said it's going to be closed Closing plants and putting more focus on electric vehicles. If we don't have the federal subsidies or if they continue to end after a certain number of car sales, what will that do in terms of dampening the potential sales? So I would actually like to see the subsidies completely redone. We are incentivizing all the wrong people because we're incentivizing early adopters that, that are risk oriented and have money. And so they would be buying these vehicles 
anyway. And the $7,500 tax credit is just a little bit of bonus for them. I want to see the incentives completely redone so what, as these vehicles become mainstream, as we start to get into that $35,000 and $40,000 vehicle, we incentivize those people instead. Okay, I, but we've already done it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so I, I think we need to let them roll off. I mean, I think that these products are strong enough to stand on their own. They're, you know, the Audi e-tron is in the $70,000 range. Yeah. The Jaguar I-Pace also in that range. Not crazy when you consider an Audi or a Jaguar outside of those. Well, exactly. Yeah. When you're looking at a Range Rover that's well over $100,000, right. you know, getting into these products for that $70,000, $80,000 range is not out of, out of the question for a luxury buyer.